but not that car. I'm talking about this car. <laughs> you see, this car is a piece of garbage. But it's still a car, which means it might do somebody some good. So as it happens, I recently met someone who could use a little bit of help. Someone with an incredible story. So to really understand the why of giving away my car, you first have to understand the who. This is Jorge. Actually, this is Jorge. But I can't show you his face because he's on the run from really dangerous people. But I did ask his daughter what celebrity he looked like, and she said, Santos. Which is this guy. But for the purpose of this video, Jorge looks like this. So his home country is in a war against some pretty bad guys. Jorge was a soldier, and not only was he one of the good guys, but he scored a huge victory against the bad ones. But unfortunately, the bad guys found out who he was and started making death threats against his family. So Jorge decided to leave. He took his family on a bus across Mexico. But what he didn't know when he got on that bus was that at nighttime, more bad guys with guns would stop the bus and demand $30 per passenger if they wanted to stay alive. And so Jorge had to pay this $120 terrorist tax to keep all four members of his family safe. But then, a few miles up the road, it happened again, and again, and again. And basically, all the way across Mexico, Jorge watched his precious savings evaporate into the hands of very bad people until he arrived at the U.S. border, considerably poorer than when he left South America. The last thing to understand is that Jorge and his family did not sneak into the U.S. They slept outside of an authorized port of entry for days until they could be documented and begin a legal process of seeking asylum. They check in every week with immigration services to let them know they're still in their registered city. They have documentation on file with the government. And most importantly, they have evidence of a legitimate asylum claim citing persecution in their home country. But the problem is that the asylum process is complicated and time-consuming. To become asylees, they need to present evidence in court, which means they need a lawyer. To get a lawyer, they need to be able to pay for a lawyer, which means they need good jobs. And to get good jobs, they need work visas. And to get work visas, they need their asylum process to already be complete. That's a lot of problems for one family to deal with. And when I met them, I knew I couldn't solve all of them. But he has a driver's license, and he can't get anywhere in our city without driving. So that's when I thought of my piece of trash car. Just because I hated the car didn't mean we couldn't do something to make it a little nicer before we gave it to Jorge. So I asked my club, PCYT, for help. Do you know why we're here? Yes, yeah, yeah, sir! I'm gonna give this family my car. It's not a very nice car. Um, so your job is to clean it and make it better. You wanna give them a dirty car? No! no! Uh, I need somebody on glass cleaning duty. Who's on, who's on tires? Tires. That's you. Interior fabric. We will clean the interior. I, I got a challenge for you. The winner gets a real brush, the uh, loser gets a toothbrush. The challenge is Chubby Bunny. You will beat Nancy. the marshmallow every time I say go until one of them begs for mercy or dies. Do you understand? Yes. All right, on your mark, get set, go. Chubby Bunny. Go. Chubby Bunny. Go! It's coming down to the line. Which one, one will get the chubby bunny reward? Eat it! More! 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 Oh, more! 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 Quite the All right, Aiden. Aiden, congratulations. Have fun. Can I get two? If you don't already have a job, then you are on the exterior. All right, we need soapers and hosers. You guys ready to clean this car? Yeah! 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 What's your strategy here? 
Uh, it's just to kind of like scrub out a place like 20 times and hope it works. Nice. Uh, so Take that, take that host. Lexi, how's it going? Good. Your uh, your wheels are nasty. Hey, has anyone done this art yet? Thanks. So after an hour of soaping and scrubbing and horsing around and mostly spraying each other with hoses, the car looked better than it had in years. But just because it looked better didn't mean it ran any better. So I asked around until I found a mechanic who, after hearing Jorge's story, would fix the car, get this, for free. All we had to do was pay a discounted rate for parts. So now the car not only looked better, but also ran so well I almost didn't want to give it away anymore. Even more importantly, the generosity of the mechanic and of my students made me realize something else. If it was just up to me, there was only a very little I could do to help Jorge's family. But it didn't have to be just up to me. If I asked others for help, maybe we could do a little bit more. So after my club did all that work to clean up the car, I parked it under a tree, and the night before I gave it to Jorge, birds pooped everywhere. So I decided to see if a local car wash could help us out, pro bono. Oh, excuse me. Yes, sir? Um, later on today, we're gonna give this car to refugees. We parked it under a tree and birds pooped all over it. Oh. Uh, so, can you help us out? And then we'll give you guys like the biggest shout out in the video. Of course, of course we'll give you a help out. I, hey, I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Is it okay if I put you in my YouTube video? No problem. Thank you, appreciate it. Those guys are pretty cool. Then my daughter said goodbye to the old family car. I love you, Corolla! And I went to Jorge's new place. See, when I first met the family, they were living in a warehouse with no heating, no hot water, and barely any electrical outlets. They were cold, hungry, and uncomfortable. They were having a really slow start on their journey to achieve the American dream, but I told Jorge that I believed in America, and not to give up. I believe in America. America has made my fortune. I told him that when my grandfather immigrated from the Philippines, he lived in a place just like this. And within one generation, our family was not only surviving, but thriving in America. They spoke perfect English. They started healthy and happy families. They became nurses and NASA engineers and joined the military. Some of them even became millionaires. But before all of that success, when my grandfather was brand new in this country, like Jorge, he was just this poor Filipino guy in the Irish slums who didn't speak the same language as anybody else. A man with very little who had to find the courage to keep going when the going got tough. And already, in just one month, Jorge and his wife were taking steps towards carving out their own little slice of the American dream. Both of them were able to find work, and between that and the generosity of the people at their church, they were able to move out of that warehouse and into an actual apartment. Jorge had already received a raise. The kids were in school. But in order to get to work, Jorge was basically renting a car for $500 a month. But not anymore. They knew I was there to give them a car, and they were so, so incredibly grateful. Jorge's wife's dream is to open a restaurant, and if you're a venture capitalist looking for an investment tip, here it is. Give this woman a restaurant, because this was delicious. Uh, chicken? This is chicken and avocado. And then I told them that before I gave them the car, I had something to show them. Jorge and his family are on the couch. Standing behind is the family of the translator who introduced us. You see, at this point, they know I'm going to give them the car. But what they don't know is that I asked my boss if we could do a little something extra. I just wanted to say welcome to the United States and we are so glad you're here and we are so happy to help you. And so she let me tell Jorge's story at a faculty meeting and to the students of the school. And even though I was nervous that some people wouldn't want to help, everywhere I looked, all I found were people eager to show love. 
support our family of asylum seekers. Thank you so much for your support. People brought in so many gifts and groceries and clothes that we completely stuffed the trunk. I asked outside of school too. I passed out flyers at local businesses. Knocked on doors, made phone calls. I was looking for friends in the community, and I found them. I found them everywhere. And as for the $2,000 of legal fees that they needed to pay to complete their asylum process, we were able to do something about that too. I wish you could see the looks on their faces when they learn what we've done. It's something that's going to bring me peace in my heart for a long time. But you can at least hear Jorge say thank you. After a couple of deep breaths and a couple of tears, Jorge had this to say. This, this is for you. <laughs> <laughs>